What is up, you guys? Welcome to yet another edition of Controversial Thoughts, Costa Rica edition. I'm still in Costa Rica, loving life here, loving the sun, loving getting better at surfing, and loving just being somewhere new and meeting different people and podcasting from a different location. So life in Costa Rica is amazing. If you're watching the video on YouTube, you can tell that I'm not quite in Austin, Texas right now. So I am fascinated by skin stuff. When I was in medical school, I almost went into dermatology, probably because I had my own eczema, my own skin issues. But I think skin issues are so interesting because they are overt, right? They are clearly on display. And you can look at someone's skin, whether they have eczema, psoriasis, acne, or whatever condition, vitiligo, and see a clear change in their skin. If you guys will recall from my podcast with Joe Rogan, uh, we discussed the fact that his vitiligo, which is a lightening of the skin due to an autoimmune attack on the melanocytes, had gotten better when he did a carnivore diet. So that was really interesting that Joe's autoimmune skin condition had gotten better himself. We talked about that on the podcast. He talked about it previously. I personally had eczema. So I had what is called atopic dermatitis. It often occurs with asthma. Both of those conditions were things that I had. That was my autoimmune condition. And if you know my story, you know that one of the big reasons that I started a carnivore diet in the first place three years ago or so was because my eczema was out of control. It was horrible. I think mushrooms were one of the things that triggered that. That's a topic for a separate controversial thoughts video. But I am fascinated by skin stuff. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about eczema. I want to talk a little bit about about acne, and I want to talk about other autoimmune skin conditions that I've seen respond to animal-based and carnivore diets. And I think this is all very timely because we just released skin, hair, and nails at heartandsoil.co. Super stoked about this one. You guys know we did Bone Matrix a few weeks ago. That one's awesome. Microcrystalline hydroxyapatite. Skin, hair, and nails is collagen, but not just any collagen. It's trachea and scapula collagen which is special types of collagen that have been studied by John Pruden. And they are full of unique peptides in addition to liver and bone marrow. Liver has lots of good nutrients in it for your skin, vitamin K2, choline, carnitine, zinc, and biotin, which is something everybody thinks about with skin stuff. And bone marrow, of course, many of the fatty acids and peptides there. So check out Skin, Hair, and Nails, now available at heartandsoil.co. And check out this article. So this one is fascinating. Somebody sent me this on Instagram. I forget who it was. Shout out to whoever you were. But this is really interesting. So this is the effect of atopic dermatitis and diet on the skin transcriptome in Staffordshire, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So this is in dogs. And this type of dog has a propensity, a predilection to develop atopic dermatitis, that is eczema. And so what they did in this small study is they compared four dogs that had canine atopic dermatitis, CAD in this acronym, and healthy dogs, so four and four. And they fed one group commercial, high processed, high carbohydrate kibble, regular dog food, and another set of dogs, a non-processed, high fat, raw meat based diet with organs in it. How cool is that? So they're taking these dogs, they're giving one set of dogs zoo food, and they're giving another set of dogs species appropriate food. This is a perfect analogy to the way that I see we as humans being fed zoo food in commercially processed, high refined carbohydrate, high seed oil foods versus animal-based diets of non-processed meat and organs and the least toxic plant foods. That's the analogy I'm trying to draw here. But look at this. We see the species appropriate diet for dogs, a non-processed high fat food, a raw meat diet in dogs. And at the end of the diet intervention, 149 differentially expect, expressed transcripts were found between the atopic and healthy dogs. And it was fascinating because they found that all genes were upregulated in the raw diet group. And they found that alterations in lipid and keratinocyte metabolism, as well as angiogenesis in the skin of atopic dogs and a significant improvement when they moved the dogs from the kibble-based diet to the raw food diet. Additionally, possible enhancement of innate immunity, decrease in oxidative stress were seen in raw food-fed dogs which could have played an important role in preventing hypersensitivities 
and disturbed immunity at a young age. So this is a really interesting paper. They go into many of the different genes that they looked at, but I thought that the, the fascinating take-homes from this paper were that, again, lipid metabolism in the skin of atopic dogs was impaired, detrimentally affecting skin barrier function. This seemed to improve when they were fed an animal-based and exclusively meat-based raw diet and differential uh, differentiation of the keratinocytes in the skin of atopic dogs might be dysfunctional. Altered gene expression of keratins were found in both the skin of atopic dogs and human atopic dermatitis patients. Um, they talk about nitric oxide, which is something I talked about in the previous video about honey and certain constituents right here found in the raw meat based diet, namely water soluble vitamins and amino acids have previously been shown to positively affect the skin barrier by decreasing T-E-W-L, they love acronyms in dogs. How fascinating is this stuff, guys, that nutrients found in the raw meat-based diet, specifically amino acids and vitamins, were important in improving the skin barrier in dogs. Could this also happen in humans? Absolutely. The same nutrients are things that we need. We don't have to eat exactly this the same diet as a dog, not an entirely canine-based diet, but a pretty similar diet. In this paper, that acronym they used, T-E-W-L, is trans epithelial water loss. And I love that in this paper, they are also suggesting that the meat-based diet was anti-inflammatory and improved oxidative stress without any chemicals found in plants other than those that would have been in the meat. So there's not feeding these dogs any plant foods, and they're reducing oxidative stress, they're finding anti-inflammation, they're finding unique nutrients in these animal foods, improved transepithelial water loss in these keratinocytes of these dogs, and atopic dermatitis improved. What a cool model for taking a species that's fed a garbage zoo diet and giving it a species-appropriate diet, in this case, raw meat and organs and bones. And I think we could say that a human diet could be very similar. It just might include some of the least toxic plant foods it got unique nutrients and atopic dermatitis improved. So we have to think about two things here. There are more nutrients in this animal-based diet given to the dogs and a removal of offending triggers that were triggering the inflammation in the skin that were triggering the autoimmune effects in the skin, which is exactly what autoimmune atopic dermatitis is. And so that's exactly what I think happened for me. I had a whole bunch of mushrooms in my diet. I was doing tons of chaga and reishi. My eczema went out of control. I think there's a real a real hypothesis that could be drawn here about offending agents, immunogenic compounds in those mushrooms, which is one of the reasons I don't like mushrooms, and other foods that are quote unquote vegetables that are triggering atopic dermatitis for a lot of people. And some animal foods, which we'll talk about because we know that dairy and eggs can be triggers as well. I wanna show you guys this one line from the paper. I hinted at it, but I thought it was particularly compelling. Anderson et al. Study 104, which I'll show you, study gene expression profiles of peripheral blood mononuclear cells from dogs fed either a kibble diet or a raw red meat diet. Uh, they used an assay called the Agilent K9 4 by 44 k microarrays. Their results indicated that a short-term three-week diet influenced gene expression at the system level. But the kibble diet was pro-inflammatory and the raw red meat diet had anti-inflammatory effects. This is in dogs but I've shown many times that there are the same effects in humans. Anyone who says that red meat is inflammatory is wrong. <laughs> in fact, in this study, it was anti-inflammatory in the canine model. How cool is that? They have all these potential mechanisms that are a little too esoteric for this, this live or this mini podcast, but here's the other paper they're referring to, the Anderson study, looking at the peripheral blood mononuclear cell gene expression profile in dogs. Again, you guys can find this and read it, but like they said, anti-inflammatory effects with a raw red meat and organs and bones. So it's a full complement diet in dogs. I suspect the same thing can happen in humans. Again, the nutrients in there are unique and there are many anti-inflammatory effects that can happen in these diets. So if you have eczema and you haven't tried an animal-based diet and you haven't tried a, a, a carnivore diet, I would recommend that you give it a try. Furthermore, personally in my clients and on Instagram, I've seen people with acne get a lot better when they go animal-based, cut out the majority of the toxic plants. 
and I've seen people with psoriasis get a lot better when they change. So I've seen all sorts of skin conditions improve when people go animal-based. Now, the one caveat here is this. You look at this study, looking at the reported triggers for worsening of eczema, dairy, gluten, alcohol, processed sugar, tomato, citrus, eggs. Dairy and eggs are animal foods. They're still on the list. If your eczema or skin condition is not getting better on an animal-based or carnivore diet, make sure you cut out dairy and eggs, but also make sure you're cutting out gluten, alcohol, sugar, tomato, citrus, and many of the other most offensive plant foods that I have talked about in the past. The name of the study is Dietary Modifications in Atopic Dermatitis Patient Reported Outcomes. So I wanna move on to talking about acne now. When I was in medical school, the prevailing paradigm was that acne was overgrowth of propionobacterium acnes in the skin, which never really resonated with me. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Why would acne be an overgrowth of bacteria in the skin? Why would this happen? I always suspected there was something else going on and knew that in my own experiences, some foods I had eaten would trigger acne. I would get acne when I would eat dairy, for instance. What's going on there? Is dairy triggering an overgrowth of this bacteria? Maybe, but not directly. What's going on here? There must be something else underlying it. Since then, there's been a lot of evidence coming out that looks at acne as an inflammatory disease in the skin. Now, again, remember what we saw in the dogs, that returning to a species-appropriate diet was anti-inflammatory for these dogs. I apologize for the background noise, guys. I'm sitting at a pool in Costa Rica because it's the only place I can get the proper internet because the internet at my townhouse isn't working right now. And I wanted to record this video for you guys and people are having fun in the pool. But anyway, if you hear howler monkeys in the background or kids frolicking in the pool, that is why. But check these studies out. The role, this one is a, looking at the pathophysiology of acne. There's a pro-inflammatory activity of the cutaneous microbiome, the silosebaceous unit, abnormal, abnormal follicular keratinization, again, a lot of inflammatory pathology going on here. And beyond this, that one's coming soon. Role of inflammation in the pathology of acne. The conventional perspective of acne pathogenesis holds that propionobacterium acne colonizes the duct of the sebaceous follicle, causing an innate immune response and the progression from a so-called non-inflammatory comedo to an inflammatory popule, pustule, or nodule. However, this viewpoint has come under increasing scrutiny in the last decade, as evidence has emerged supporting a role for inflammation at all stages of acne lesion development, perhaps subclinically, even before comedo, which is the pre-zit formation. So the immunohistochemical pathways underlying the initiation and propagation of the inflammation acne are complex, et cetera, et cetera. But this is just to say, there's a lot of good evidence that acne is inflammatory, that there is something else going on in the system of the organism that is causing acne. You do not need tons of fancy face washes. You are not getting acne because your skin is too dirty. You are getting acne because of something in your environment, because of discordance between your genetics and your environment. And I would submit the hypothesis I would advance is just like atopic dermatitis. If you can find a species appropriate human diet for you, which might be different than your neighbor, but I think most of these are going to be based in animal-based ideology, mostly meat and organs and fat and connective tissue and collagen, like we have in skin, hair, and nails, the new supplement from Heart and Soil, and the least toxic plant foods, I think your acne is going to get a lot better. You can send me thank you notes on the DMs. And just in case you didn't believe me on this, this study that I showed for a moment earlier, there's a lot of evidence between acne and insulin resistance. Surprise, surprise, right? Here is one showing that in 36 women, there's a relationship between female acne and insulin resistance. The association is independent of hyperandrogenemia. They go on to say anti-insulin drugs, maybe adjunctive treatment. I would say just correct the insulin resistance at its root. Relationship between serum leptin and insulin resistance among obese Nigerian women shows that leptin and insulin levels are correlating in people with insulin resistance. The reason I pulled that one up is because in one of the studies about acne and one of the papers about the inflammation, they suggest that there are alterations in the leptin signaling associated with acne as well. And we know that in a lot of people with insulin resistance, leptin resistance co-occurs. 
So one more study here that I thought was pretty interesting, dealing with insulin resistance and acne, insulin resistance and severe acne. This is a lot of patients, 243 acne vulgaris patients, 156 healthy controls. They looked at blood insulin levels, glucose, and calculated the HOMA score, the HOMA IR score. You can see here, there's a strong correlation between insulin resistance and acne in these patients. So I don't know how many of you guys are dermatologists. If you have acne and the dermatologist is not suggesting that you might be insulin resistant or checking your fasting insulin or checking your postprandial glucose or checking your C-peptide or putting a CGM on you, they might be missing the boat here. If you have questions about how you become insulin resistant or how you correct insulin resistance, that I've covered in many videos previously. My strong belief is that insulin resistance is not caused by carbohydrates, specifically non-processed carbohydrates like raw organic honey or fruit or even sweet potato. I believe insulin resistance at its root is caused by seed oils and processed sugars. There's a difference between processing of sugar and a whole based sugar in a honey. I talked about that in the previous video on controversial thoughts about honey and nitric oxide metabolites. I submit to you that if you are insulin resistant and you remove all processed sugars from your diet and all sources of seed oils, your insulin resistance will get better. In the short term, you might want to limit carbohydrates also because if you are insulin resistant, you are not going to process carbohydrates well. This we know. Once you have corrected that, you will probably be able to reincorporate carbohydrates in your diet. And there are many examples, myself included, of people who are metabolically healthy, who have carbohydrates in their diet and do not develop insulin resistance, even the dreaded fructose in whole food form. I'm not gonna go eating fructose in the form of sucrose, table sugar, but I don't fear fructose in fruit. I don't fear fructose in honey. So what is the takeaway from this whole video? I've showed you a number of articles suggesting that acne, atopic dermatitis are related to diet and that returning to a more species appropriate type of diet, at least in dogs, which I really believe is quite relevant for humans, could be profoundly beneficial for things like atopic dermatitis and also for acne, if we believe that returning to a species appropriate diet, eliminating the foods I talked about will improve insulin resistance. This is all super interesting to me because all these skin conditions are on display for everyone to see and they get treated with tons of creams and tons of face washes and tons of shit that isn't addressing the root cause of a discordance between your genetics and what you are eating and your environment. So I think if you correct your diet, if you change your diet to a more species appropriate diet, like an animal based diet consisting of mostly meat and organs, cutting out the most toxic plant foods, things like stems, roots, leaves, and seeds of plants, including the least toxic plant foods, fruit, honey, you will thrive, you'll feel better, you'll look better, you'll do better, especially if you make the majority of your diet meat and organs, including desiccated organs from hardened soil if you need those, if you can't get the fresh organs, especially our skin hair and nails, which is now out, I'm super excited about this, that your skin will get better and you can throw away all of these crazy face washes which are not addressing the root cause of your problem. And you can look on my Instagram, I will repost stuff in the future. I've seen people with psoriasis have it completely resolved with carnivore animal-based diets. I've seen acne completely change. I've seen head-to-toe eczema completely change. I've seen vitiligo completely change. I've seen all sorts of skin conditions change massively with dietary changes. So know if you're insulin resistant and know what a species appropriate diet is for you, you're not a dog, but I think that study gives us many good indications because I think the keratinocytes, the epidermal cells of your skin are very similar between humans and dogs. And I'm not saying you need to eat a raw meat diet like a dog, but return to a species appropriate diet for humans. And I think your skin will get a whole lot better. So that's today's controversial thoughts. Again, I apologize for the less than uh, optimal audio, but we're living life in Costa Rica. Gonna get out, do a little more skating and surfing now. Check us out, hardensoil.co. Check out our recent supplements, Bone Matrix, Skin Hair and Nails. Get back to thriving, guys. Reclaim your ancestral birthright to radical health because you do have a birthright to live radically, whatever that looks like for you. Love you all.